And Paul, um, uh, you had some of your thunder stolen, but it definitely wouldn't be stolen by Richard earlier on, who is not going to be here or is going to be here. But he is also nullable, as in, in, in indeterminate whether he exists or doesn't exist in the rest of this meeting. But you are going to do nullable stroke optional types. Yeah. How are they being done? And etc. So I shall o over to you. And um, you have an hour till five past five. All right. I, I, I have all these ideas in my head and I figured this is like the least or at least the most co coherent one that I have some sort of a grasp on, um, which will either depress or amaze you regarding every other thought that is currently up here somewhere, um, which are going to be worse. So, um, so nullable types have been, oh, how's, how's the volume? I, I always forget to check. Is it okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so Marco Cantu has mentioned nullable types as being on our roadmap, which is what now non-existent, at least in public. Um, I don't know, for years. And I mean, I didn't know what nullable types were when I first saw it mentioned. And it was only so like my background is um, basic Turbo Pascal, Macintosh Pascal at university, um, Turbo Pascal for, for like our own business after that. Delphi in 2000 when Australia was getting a GST, like VAT, and um, it was only around about maybe 2018 or so that I guess I was looking at algorithms and C++ as a standard algorithm library, and I was looking at, um, started getting interest in C++, and then I was comparing um, like I think I took um, stood next permutation, which is like we'll take uh, a container of anything, I guess, and just permute the order of them until uh, you know, like according to an algorithm until you get right back to where you started from. And um, I tried that in C++ or C++ Builder and Delphi and when I first tried it, it was like 10 times slower in Delphi and then you make a few changes and try it with integers and then it's like six times slower and then five times slower and anyway. Um, and then so I started sort of, anyway, C++ led by chance to reading about or joining or C++ and COVID led me to joining a group online that was um, reading through category theory for programmers, which is a cool book, but not for everyone. Um, best attacked in large groups. Um, and that led to some you know, interest in functional ideas, functional programming, Haskell, Scala, um, and so forth. And that kind of wrapped around well, ever since then, I've been trying to tie that stuff back into, like, what does that mean in Delphi? Like, I always loved Delphi, right? Um, and the whole point of, so I started to sort of see things in a way that I figured that there are, there's sort of like, so C sharp, right, is I haven't programmed in C sharp, so it was a bit of a journey, like trying to figure out like what their null story is at the moment and 
whoa, man, it's, it's a thing, right? And um, so it seems to me that they have a focus on no safety, right? So we can, what, what are things that uh, can be null? So typically pointers, right? Um, C, C++, pointers can be null or they can be useful. And um, uh, C++ came up with the idea of references which can't be null, right? The only thing you can initialize them with one time is a valid address. Um, what have we got in Delphi? We have, we have pointers if we dig deep enough. Um, all our classes, um, interface, anything that goes on the heap, of course. Um, has an address on the heap and then a pointer out to something, including, I didn't realize until like the last few days that I always thought that we had valid strings, empty strings and like a null pointer basically. Um, and I realized in doing a little bit of playing around that, oh, okay, empty strings are null pointers. Um, that was news to me. So we have these things that can have like a danger point, but then separately push that idea aside, consider an integer. An integer is a memory location x number of bits wide. You know, it could be a byte, could be 16 bits, could be 32, could be 64. And generally, well, it depends on the application. Maybe every single one of those possible values is a perfectly valid um, instance of that type in your program. So for example, in the typical math definition of distance, it's you, you like, we think of distances like the straight line distance, but there's things like the can't remember what they call the New York City block distance where you are only either going across or up. Um, this Euclidean distance is probably in hyperbolic versions, whatever. I mean, they all have um, a characteristic that, you know, the distance of a point from itself is zero, the distance from a point from somewhere else is positive. Um, you probably get like the triangle inequality that this distance plus this distance is always going to be greater than the straight line distance between greater than or equal to the straight line distance between. So in that particular case, if you've got some sort of function and it calculates a distance, you could perhaps choose to send back a negative value to indicate something's gone wrong, right? But if you're in a, maybe a video game where your uh, uh, character, whatever, has a, you know, is facing in a certain direction, maybe every distance is valid. You could be positive distances in front of you, negative distances behind you, and there are no, you know, without just picking out 99999 or something as an error value, they're like every possible integer is a valid um, function return value. And so if you want to somehow signal errors, you have to do something else. Okay. So, um, there are, well, okay. This leads on to the idea that, I mean, Richard was already talking about and he has mentioned it actually. <laughs> oh, you're on the screen there because you've, you've mentioned it before, either in a meeting or in a, um, a, a, a 
on Slack or something or other. That's why I put you on there. Um, optional types is, um, I don't know if it's correct to say a functional idea, but it's where you have the entirety of all the possibilities of one type plus an extra quality of possibly being absent, completely absent, right? So um, in, in mathematics, they, they call it a pointed type, uh, which I didn't understand for a long time, but it just meant basically any mathematical structure you can think of plus this other, you could think of it as a point, right? You know, you're either somewhere over here or you're over here. Um, and we can sort of think of that like we could either have um, uh, a class that is um, situated at any possible memory address other than, well, that's a bad example, actually. <laughs> and we'll come back to that. But, um, um, all right, stop, stop talking, reset. Um, I skipped over the collaborative part because all of these are like, like Richard said before, I think it'd be a benefit to have these ideas in our language. I mean, I want a lot of things for the future of our language. Um, we've got a big kind of step up in 2009, 2010 with generics and RTTI and the thing that I can never remember, uh, or anonymous functions. Um, but something else. And um, there seems to be a bit of energy around Embarcadere at the moment, maybe. I mean, it won't, you can't do these things overnight. There's so much thing, you know, we've got all these platforms and all the rest of it. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think there are good people in there um, with, you know, some vision that maybe aren't in control of like what the whole company does, but who knows? Um, so I'd like to like think about like, how can we do this thing, but not look like C sharp, right? Um, which we're going to get to. Uh, Alan Bauer talked about it in 2008. And um, um, Stefan Glinka, I think, um, Spring for D has been I don't actually know when Spring for D sort of like first became a thing. I meant to look that up. Um, Dahlia posted when we got um, managed record types. I think that was 2018. Um, I've, I've seen them all over the place. The, the, you know, people just mention, you know, that they've made their own kind of knowable type. And this, um, what do you call it? Quality Central, the, the old um, um, yeah. Okay, so, so well, when's this? Where's the date? 2015. Okay, I don't know Horatio, but um, he was asking for null types in Delphi. Um, give some ideas about what their characteristics should be. Um, some of these I agree with and mm, I mean, there are, there are things, okay, so I think there are different flavors of this T nullable that have been floating around and, and it's something that we can, I think it's something we can discuss. Um, Like we have to, you have to sort of have an idea of what, what is the point of them? And, um, uh, no, <laughs> the zoom tab at the top of the page is really getting in my way here. Fine. We'll shut it down. Okay. Um, about to say something. That's a pity. Okay. 
Um, I think it was about the, 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 the feeling of what they're for. Um, I get the feeling like I don't know C-sharp, right? I, I, this is a really great video. It goes for an hour. It talks all about null in C-sharp. Um, so I got, I got a lot of, I listened through it maybe three times while I was driving around for work. And um, yeah. Okay, so so apparently 2005, they added, oh, sorry, I meant to say, the thing about, so like C sharp and value types, they added nullable quality to value types. Okay, so if you have a value type, in general, there's no other space for something to be like the error condition without just doing something very arbitrary. And so if you think of, even just a record of like a boolean and then a value like the boolean can be false and which means not that your string is you know empty it's, it's not like um um no it is to signify that it's just something is just not there at all right it's not it's not a particular type of t a bad type of t there is no t there at all excepting only that now our type isn't just t it's uh, optional t which is its own type um and that's called the the semi-predicate problem um i okay in some context that i can't remember okay um so they decided to so this is like a type declaration so bool question mark or t question mark um, is to indicate that it's not only just a not just a bool or not just a integer or not just a t it's a nullable of t that we would i don't know if they have like i guess they have nullable square you know, angle brackets t as well and that the two things mean the same thing i mean i kind of hope um so i've got on there like the bull the bull um the nullable bull obviously can carry true or false or null it's like a room if you go into a room you can have a switch that's on and switch that's off but what about a room that has no switch whatsoever okay um it's just it's just dark and there is no light okay. um and I mean, the, there's a, a link here to um, the Microsoft website has, you know, a lot of documentation about uh, C sharp and we have some code examples. I have no idea of how my, oh boy, when did I start? <laughs> when do we need to finish by, sorry? Jason? I'll just keep talking in the meantime. Um, so this is declaring a nullable Sorry, Paul, I was busy trying to find my unmute button. Five past five is our finished time. So that is in um, 40 minutes. 40, 40 minutes, okay. Um, so we've got a nullable. I'll, I'll try and, like, we don't want to focus on C-sharp, but I want to give an impression of, like, where they're at. Um, so there's, they, so again, we're in 2005, right? C-sharp 2. A nullable integer that you can assign 42, you could also assign it null because it's nullable. Um, this is some of their syntax. Uh, I don't think this one here is very much used. Um, B can, you know, the integer can, or the nullable integer can be compared to null. You can you can have a dot has value to tell you if it's null or not. The get the value out if it's not null um you can decide to um be given some sort of like you know you might want to be like we've got this nullable integer i either want exactly what it is or a substitute value um oh my god yes this there's all this to, like let me tell you in the c, c sharp whatever atmosphere environment they have um nullable value types 
nullable reference types, the null conditional operator, the null coalescing operator, null coalescing assignment operator, um, a nullable annotation context, um, the nullable forgiving operator, and I'm actually skipping one, I think, but um, I like nobody should listen to me, but I, it just seems like a mess, basically. Um, or at least. So I forgot to write down here that, uh, oh no, okay, so we're still on the. So the null coalescing operator is basically like a um, ternary, ternary operator, well, a dory operator. <laughs> so um, if this value is null, it won't assign to D, it will, it will take this one as a alternative. And then of course, you, you can have them C double question, D double question, E double, like blah, right? Um, uh, here is like initializing a, uh, a object field you either got a valid name or if it's empty, then you're gonna um, throw an exception. Um, yeah, you know, okay. A lot of question marks flying around. I mean, I don't know what people think about the, the type question mark syntax as opposed to like actual nullable of integer. Um, I'm not really a fan. Um, I think there are some better uses of, with the, the question mark later on. And actually Richard in the past has mentioned uh, Swift, I think having something to do with a, um, a question mark, but I ran out of time to dig that back up again. So, um, so like in, in this bit of code here, the, the list, so uh, a list of integers with the question mark is a option or a nullable <clears> list <throat> of integers, which now that I look at it would be either you have no list or you have a list of integers as opposed to if the question mark was inside the brackets and in which case you would have a list of maybe integers, maybe not. Um, and then this assignment here with the double question equal says this numbers is going to be equal to All right, see, how you look at these things and you understand then you is basically I, saying if so, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying so you, you asked you asked the question it's slightly rhetorical about the question marks. I, 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 I I, I, I loathe them <laughs> as in, as in something, something, something that you have to have a intri real intrinsic knowledge of what it is before you can actually read it. I don't like it. And that's why I like Pascal. It's sort of, it, uh, and, and everything that gets introduced that sort of makes it more cryptic, uh, just, you know, to save a few characters. Um, I understand well, that the question mark, you know, it does, it makes patterns in your, in, in your brain. And so if you're completely familiar with it, then maybe it does make sense. But that numbers space, double question mark equals, I, I, well, go on, what, 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 what does it mean? So can I, the, the yes, please. question mark is a coalesc coalescing thing. I think just on that thing with the question mark, my feeling is that the, the hard types that we know of are not null because like, we all know what an integer is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In coding terms, we may want to know if a variable has been initialized. And in things like a database, storing null actually can give us important information. Oh, you know, sure. about, about the fact we don't have the data yeah. rather than you no, know, value of it. Yeah, so, I, so I think having a having a syntax which specifically declares this is a nullable type which will yeah. hold either a real type yeah. or it won't. And and if it doesn't, it's yeah. it's undefined. 
I've got I've got no no problems no problems with the concept. I've, my sort of my bread and butter databases and nulls and all that. I, I you know it's 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 the question mark syntax that that that, that sort of makes sort of. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I I agree. I don't like it because it's like decorating an int, but it's not decorating an int. What we're talking about is something that tracks whether or not it is holding a value. So. Oh. It's basically saying, have we initialized this with a value? If not, then it's yeah. But and, and then the double one that says if 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 it's if this is a null, then substitute this value yeah. for it. It's just it's just sort of character trickery to me. But anyway, go, sorry. Let's see. Yeah. But, no, but, no, but, I mean... back to back to the numbers space question mark space that that one that you highlighted there. Two characters, uh, two lines up from your flashing yep. you know, your, yep. was, that, was that actually me I, I i figured out what was puzzling me um that's actually the oh. right hand side of an assignment so so numbers is oh well okay <laughs> what an idiot okay numbers is defined right there to be a nullable list okay forget about the integer part it's a nullable list you could say optional list and so numbers double question equal means if it's already got a and i guess this is going to uh, uh the add five is going to apply to across the entire list um that's a, a separate point but if numbers is already in a st instantiated type then you can ignore the new part and just go on to dot add five mm -hmm. whereas if numbers is currently null, then it will basically, you know, uh, do what would we do? Uh, uh, numbers becomes equal to t list dot create brackets integer, and then do the add five, right? So it, it's saying, it's saying it, this part here is saying if this has got nothing in it, then you know, like make it be a real um if, if it's not if it's not an inhabited type yet make it a properly uh initialized type and then go on and do the and do the rest of it so um i mean it's really got it's got a bit of that like c and c plus plus maybe particularly c has got that flavor of like, why do why do things on five lines if you can do it all in, you know, like you, C will have a function, but also a plus plus in the middle of it, which means like increment this variable, then apply it to this function. And then like maybe a plus plus at the end of it, like to, like once you've done all that, then increment and like, well, uh, we you're... can just, yeah, so my, my, my interpretation of that is why, why, why have a code syntax that means that you'd only have to read it once when you really need to read it five times to make sense of it? Uh, that's, uh, but that's, that's from a non C and C++ program, but yeah. It's... I, I'm, not, I'm not promoting this stuff. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand it. Um, I mean, I guess you get used to idioms, I suppose, in any language. But uh, Rob reminded me of something which was up the top here to where I yeah my blind points on the topic so databases and JSON like I've seen people talking about null in terms of databases and JSON um that's not really something I've been thinking about so something to bear in mind um and Rob like did have you once said you you come from as like a C++ background uh, yeah, I mean, um, C for many years, then C++. Because, like C++ in particular, when I started to learn that, it appeared to me like they have never seen a punctuation mark they didn't want to use five different ways, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll have um, the declaration of a class uh, or a struct, maybe. Um, and then you like a, a colon, and then you you like the there could be the the another structure that it's inheriting from. 
or multiple in C++. And then a, a colon, but then there's like a, a form of initia, initialization that can happen like before the body of a, like a procedure that we have. And then there's the body of the procedure. Okay, anyway, this is just some trauma that I have in my life. Uh, lifted operations. I meant to actually move this down, but okay, so let's, we can talk about it. So we, again, we're st oh my God, we're still on 2005. Um, so this talk might end up just being a part one, <laughs> uh, depending on how far we get. Um, so lifted, like the word here without context doesn't seem like lifted, why lifted, right? I'm not going to explain that right now, but basically it's like the world of normal variables and functions and interactions and stuff is one place and the world of nullable things is like a shadow duplicate of that and when you have functions over here that we use all the time like plus and times and double plus um, there's a, a way of transferring those over to the shadow world that is mathematically like correct. Um, I've just tried to kind of, I don't know if it even needs really explaining in this particular context, but like we all know what a plus plus and a equal to a times c, a equal to a plus b mean when they're just integers and we can probably easily figure it out in our heads what they're going to be if they're uh, nullable integers because if we see a null anywhere, it just becomes null, right? If like, if you try to multiply by a null, now we're just null. If you try to add a null, you, you, you ruined everything and now becomes null. I mean, that might be a way in which other people's implementations differ from that, but I don't think they should. Um, and there are reasons for that, but we'll see if we get there. Um, so again, I forgot to look this up. Reference types, nullable reference types, I think are like C sharp six. And I don't know what year that is, um, but I think there was quite a gap. And so the thing is we, you had your value types and they're like, they're like honest. They're like just your normal, like hardworking farmers, right? They don't have any, like, they live on the stack. And your highfalutin reference types, you know, they got your, your, your pointer up into, like, fairyland. Um, obviously, they can have zero pointers, and, and, and that's a problem for us a lot of the time. Um, so... Like I don't have a C sharp perspective. I, my feeling is like this is about managing null safety, and I know they had, they've gone through these stages where like our, not quite our DFM maybe or maybe sort of similar or, um, what's our DF config, con, you know, can't think of the word now, but like they have an option where you can turn on and off, like how nulls are treated and how they are warned about um, in the... You mean compiler directives? I guess, yeah. Maybe project directive, I suppose. Um, but anyway, so... Okay. Um, So they have some like static analysis going on in their compiler slash IDE slash whatever. I mean, obviously, I guess we do too. Um, there's a bit here that I don't actually understand because here's a, here's a normal string being initialized with hello and here's a nullable string that's being initialized with null, basically. 
um, and the exclamation mark is like the compiler is supposed to to look at this and say you're you're basically it's like assigning a um a 64-bit integer down to a 32 you're shrinking this like you should be able to assign a 32 up to a 64 because there's plenty of room you're not going to lose any information but if you assign a 64-bit integer down to a 32 you could be throwing information away and never like potentially not know about it um, that's a bit like assigning a nullable to a not base type but you know whatever the correct terminology would be for the underlying type of the of the of the optional uh, and the com compiler would complain and the, the exclamation mark is to just say like shut up I know what I'm doing um, but what I mean on this particular example I've just copy pasted it like I don't understand it, it came from an example on a web website maybe the Microsoft website okay okay I got it Thank you. Um, I don't know what this string would end up saying if you assign a null to it. Like it says up here that uh, the proper reference type may never be assigned a value that may be null. Whereas like the actual bits and bytes that represent that variable, um, like it says, here they're, they're represented by the same types a variable of type t and t question mark it's like it's basically using the zero value of a point pointer um, in a difference in uh, I don't know semantic semantic way um, anyway I don't understand the line here's an, uh, so this example of initializing a field is just uh, to say apparently to tell the compiler look it's okay this thing can take a null um, maybe that I don't, I don't know I shouldn't spend too long on this um, yeah and the same here so so hopefully you get starting to get the feeling that there are question marks and exclamation marks popping up all over the place. And I mean, this one, this one, maybe not so bad, right? Um, this is saying like, if this is null, then just forget this whole statement. Don't go on, don't like, it's a short circuiting, uh, it's called the null conditional operator. Um, um, otherwise, foo is a proper variable, and we can get bar. You know, we can reference bar, and then compare. Uh, presumably, bar's an integer or something, um, and like it can go on and on. So you've got here, um, if customers is uh, you know not null, and then it has an array of whatever fields and that particular one zero is not null and it has another field called orders that is not null then like run this method and if any of those give problems then we just end up with like count is nullable and we'll end up with a null in that in that variable and all of this just feels very i mean i don't hate this um but the whole approach of all this is like, like it's like, it's like digging out, like, like manual, it's like manual, horrible manual labor, right? So that's, that's all I'm going to say about C-sharp. Um, probably anyone, all anyone ever would want to hear about it for a while. Um, I just slipped this in there because actually I thought this is wrong. It should be Craig, not Craig stunts, but I got it wrong. I don't know. I, um, yeah. Okay.
Craig Stunts, um, 2009. I, I think there was like, there were people in uh, Borland, Code Gear, whoever they were, around about that 2009, 2010, people who were interested in functional programming. I think Barry Kelly, Craig Stunts, definitely. Um, maybe, you know, there's a Danny guy who passed away in the last several number of years a tall guy um i just see like i'm i'm going back to older articles and stack overs and things just in my mental travels and um i just see these signs of like maybe it's kind of like interesting and vibrant in there at, at a particular point in time and i don't know what we get now um so alan bauer 2008 had made this kind of classic Delphi um, blog post called a nullable post for <laughs> 2008. They, we apparently just missed out on getting managed records and they should be along soon. <laughs> so, you know, 10 years later, no problem. Um, and so he put, so we, we got nullable T as a record. Obviously, it's got to hold the T in there. It's got a Boolean to say if it's actually something there or there isn't. You need to be able to get it out. Um, he added this bit about like you know being able to sort of substitute um, things if something happens to be null. Um, and he's got these explicit and implicit um, conversions which is the part here that I think is not good. Um, I mean, maybe the explicit, but um, hopefully we'll come to that. People made comments. Um, uh, Halbert's point was basically like, uh, I've kind of lost it now, but there wasn't like, it didn't seem like a, a structure for like being able to carry a null around it was just kind of waiting until it got a um you know its type like <laughs> waiting to be married or something or something um um and uh, you know it's just a um um it's quite interesting because oh alan puts this up and says there's a problem with it you know without managed records because um it's okay if you construct it but then I guess if you're just like passing it around, or something, if 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 what in C plus plus would be called a default construction, it's just like the variable is just being created on in in a mechanical way as part of the processing. Um, the boolean part's going to end up some of the time with um, uh, rubbish in there, possibly, and then he goes through some. Uh, advantages in like, well, if I put an interface in there, it'll always get initialized to zero and then go through these different options and um, then comes up creating with a, I'm slipping my mind, but basically creating a uh, a record, which is a VMT for a non, what do you call it, um, reference counting fake interface as like a a, 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 a a constant structure that he could put in there that instead of like it won't it won't be being created on and off all over the place and and there won't be one for every single variable of this type will just be this anyway it's interesting so um, I can recommend going to have a look at that um, article um, Barry Kelly still around i would really like to have um if someone could organize like um him to give us a delphi talk years later that would be great um seems like a smart guy um yeah he was also down on the implicit conversion part and so he said it doesn't lift operators that's a bit like what we were saying before up here about the lifting lift it. so the functional way of having these all right, something to come back to. Um, 
I think this guy, um, Valentin, was saying like if you just create a local array of all these nullables, that was one of the cases maybe in which the memory wasn't being like completely zeroed out or you know automatically, and so that was when the um, the uh, you know the boolean part could be anything. Um, could be wrong. So 2020 Dahlia posted about using um, exactly the same sort of idea, but with um, custom managed records. And of course, they can guarantee that you you start out correctly with a with a uh, uh, it auto automatically null unless you you know provide uh, um, a value to instantiate it with. And she said that it is uh, fast, apparently faster than the, I assume the, the previous incarnation. Um, Spring for D is a huge deal um, that I don't know anywhere near enough about. Um, uh, Stefan spoke at Delphicon 2020, so there's a, a video there. Um, I don't think he really, really sells it enough in general. Like he, he talks about all the elements and the capabilities and stuff and nullable and event of T and, and uh, I enumerable and all the, all the other things. But um, I think what we really need and what I'd like to get to is like sort of showing the use of it and why is it, why is it cool? Why is it um, interesting? But um we had a little bit of that in the ADUG um, presentation, but um, uh, in in last month, I think, but um, not enough. So um, he was responding to, so he had questions after the video in DelphiCon, and then there was like a spillover, and he said he'd get back to people, and he put it on his blog. Um, and those are these questions about you know, nullable, and um, I won't go into that about it, but he also had these other entries about, um, I think he was basically looking at the same way of like, how do you, uh, um, he was wanting to just be able to say a variable of type nullable t equal nil. And uh, he, he, he racked his brain and found a way. Um, so that's, that's a blog post. This is a blog post about uh, a maybe type. So a maybe type. So I was kind of differentiating at the, at the beginning, differentiating between like null safety, a thing like a reference type or whatever that can have a zero in it. And like a physical separation between a type as it exists in Delphi plus in addition, like an on off switch, right? That, that's kind of what an optional is, right? Um, you might have this T of some particular type or if it's switched off, you just, you, you just don't, you don't have it, right? It's not there. You can't count on it. Like it doesn't exist yet. Um, the maybe type in Haskell is exactly, is exactly that. And, um, so where are we? Um, there's only 10 minutes left. So, um, I'm going to, I gave a, 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 a talk to Perth and Melbourne people in the past when I started learning about category theory and, uh, it was semi incoherent and like, I didn't know enough about it at the time. It was just kind of interesting. I mean, it'd been a year, but there's still like, it has been uh, since 2021, I think. And I like, it's a deep subject and really interesting. Um, but I made this teeny tiny example of a T maybe like, it's just this bit here a record with a boolean, right? A type T 
and a bullion. Not, you know, I didn't dress it up. There's not it, the the T should be private. It should have a constructor. It should have a um, a getter, um, et cetera, all, all that sort of thing. But um, it's basically actually I made this for myself because I had a program I wanted to 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 run that needed to be told like a day, just a day of the week. And um, either in, in shorthand, like, um, you know, like M, T, U, W, whatever, or man, you know, like I want to accept any of that. And like the, the, the program flow, if you thought about it, like, if I didn't put anything on the command line, then it had to ask me what what day do you want? If I did put something on the command line, it could be rubbish or it could be a day. Um, either way, once you get like to the first step, you've either got something from the command line or got something from the keyboard, and then it could still be either rubbish or something valid, and then you have to decide what you're you're doing about it. And so this is the kind of like logical flow, doing it in like a procedural way. And if we use um, these optional types and like literally pass these, not, not, not try and like separate them and decide where we're going, but just pass that type okay like it's like not caring is there something in here or not i just pass it to the next guy and then that function will accept that and decide what to do with it um i think in this particular case there was a once we were once we were coming out of this second box you know you get to a point there's definitely a string and we're definitely proceeding right um this is meant to be the idea. I mean, there's still a there's still a, a, a an element that I was kind of hadn't tweaked at that particular point in time, but um, this was just this little program to do that for me. Um, this might be a good potentially a place to stop because the, the next step is like a microscopic introduction to category theory. And uh, I don't know, like people may have had enough, I think, um, potentially. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, I'm busy. I was looking at your diagram for category theory. I don't actually know what it is, so I'm. Yeah. Okay. So. So so interesting thing. We're living in interesting times, right? Because, like, C plus plus has just gotten coroutines. They they they've been in C sharp. I think in a maybe a mild kind of level since like 2005 or something. Unity uses them. Uh, Kotlin. Uh, Java's been adding Project Loom for for years, and I think it, it's it's been integrated now. C plus plus has been working on coroutines since before C plus plus twenty, and more for C plus plus twenty three. But coroutines were first like named in nineteen sixty eight. Um, there's some other example I am forgetting. And um, category theory was like an uh, an area of maths that people came up with in like 1948, right? But it's it was seen as like just incredibly abstract. But it's kind of like a an X-ray system for mathematics, like to like to discard kind of all the details that you possibly can about like things and see a structure 
uh, and then how you can compare them between things. And then over the years, people have uh, realized that like the same things apply to logic, apply to um, um, like proof theories and um, like program language design and all this other like the 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 like the not idiom <laughs> the like little little bumper sticker version of category theory is like you're already doing it in programming <laughs> it's just not something that we get can recognize or 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 like anyway sorry um going back to spring for d i mean um i had a go at uh i started having a go at uh, advent of code 2022 with the aim of doing in delphi um then refactoring to spring for d and then trying in rust and then trying in c plus plus um <laughs> Predictably, that's got, you know, a little of the way along, but, um, but Erwin, who isn't, I don't think here today, um, messaged in Slack and he had a go at it and he used uh, Sp Spring for D and um, oh, I meant to copy out, like, why is this relevant? So, so what he's got here is, um, so a T enumerable is anything you can iterate through, right? It could be um, an array, it could be a list, it could be a tree, it could be a, I don't know, a dictionary, maybe a hash map, I'm not sure. Um, like, like it says, anything that's enumerable. And um, so the, the, these, these uh, advent of code problems are like you know like oh there are these natives and they you know like you're on an island and they're carrying backpacks and some like all the backpacks have got different like uh, uh weights in them and they want to go like be able to walk in as far as into the jungle as possible and you know blah 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 you had to figure out like what's the heaviest backpack or what's the lightest or something um and so that's what's going on here is that it, it, i don't know that the spring for d terminology but the select thing is coming from link and i i mean i don't like this terminology but um it's basically you're taking a, 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 a um so sorry keyboard source string list a string list with the information that you want to um it looks like we're adding up we're adding up numbers okay but but they're in text form and um this function is basically saying we've got a container we've got a function go through the entire container applying that function um oh the, this is like um um google's like map reduce okay everybody probably heard of the idea of map reduce is to um you've got a container the map part is here's one function apply it to everything in the container and then the reduce idea is to like if they're numbers and you're just adding them up is to squash them all down until you've got one number right um i had written my own um i meant to copy in here um so with the uh where's get out All right. I thought it looked quite neat, but um, I can't find it immediately. Well, uh, it must be. Yeah, I guess you can. I don't. That's okay. Um, so. 
this is why I think it's probably a good stopping spot. But basically the idea is like if you start with a list of a particular type, so T, right? And then you've got a function that can turn T's into a different type. So U in this particular case. So you've got a whole row of T and you've got a function that turns T's into a different type. You end up with a whole row of the different type, right? It's like if you've got a... a, a um, a whole row of green ducks and you've got a lot of blue paint you can end up with a lot of blue ducks right um and and this, that's all this is doing is like we're starting with a list we've got a function of the appropriate type this is our output list and we just go through painting the ducks right like paint the duck add to the list paint the duck add to the list um and this is getting a little bit off track, but the, the, this map, so this map is, um, ah, okay. <laughs> what he was doing was, yeah, it was, um, particularly for a string list, but I mean, it, it applies in both cases. Um, what was I going to say? Right. So this could just be a full loop right you could do like four i becomes equal to one to the length of something or other like so and so becomes equal to f of whatever repeat okay you can write exactly the same thing um as this uh, map function which is like there's a terminology issue because people think of dictionary like in spring for d the thing that is basically a dictionary is called map, right? Lots of places call like an associative container a map, like key value, because it kind of maps from keys to values. But this is a map in a different sense. It's a transforming function. Um, and the reason like why would Google so like, if we just concentrate on the map part of map reduce, <laughs> but, excuse me. <laughs> um, the great advantage to that is like, if we don't have a for loop, if we do them one at a time, this is the equivalent operation, but it can be parallelized in to, to, I haven't told you the reasons why, <laughs> but this, hey. Operation. Uh, Port for I, I just, yep. just, just, just. I need. I, I was, I was hoping or waiting for a pause, for a, a suitable pause point. But we're, no, uh, go. we're no, no. We're just, we're just sort of heading into um, uh, what we're sort of coming up to uh, ten past five. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I don't. Has, has anyone got any, 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 any questions or? I mean, this is that map idea, basically. Oh, basically. Um, and the, the point is because this single operation is being done to all of the elements of the container independently, like there's no reason it has to be done on one machine. It doesn't have to be done on one chip. It can be done across the internet and the results collated back again. But this is kind of off topic to the nullable. Um, <laughs> other, <laughs> Other than you can think of an optional type, an optional T, as being a container that has either zero or one things in it, right? It's a way of like, oh, yeah, holding my hand on the screen is not going to do anything for you guys. But um, if, you, if you're like, just, just think of this one column, it's either there or it's not. That's, that's kind of what an optional is all about and it should kind of work this is my point in the same way as all these other can bigger air quotes bigger containers and the way to do that is not to like get things out of an optional and do operations on it and then maybe put it back is basically to take a function and put it in a container and let the container do like know how to deal with it and like, okay, end of part one. <laughs>
I hope some of that was coherent. I, I just can't, I'm struggling to tie, to, 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 to tie the tie this back into the nullable. I, uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, let me give it even faster. Um, uh, where is Adobe? Um, okay. Um, uh, let me speed through this. This is a previous. Okay, so that's where they are, Mark. Um, I was saying there's like a shadow land, right? So all of our types and all of the possible functions that you can do in Delphi can all be like kind of thought of as this amorphous blob of points, and but with like laws that apply about how they interact. Simple laws, like only three. Um, they're on there. One, two, three. Um, and there's a thing called a functor, which basically photocopies the entire structure and takes it over somewhere else. But it's called a different computational context. So nullable is one of those ways, like all of these functions, F and G that are on the screen can be combined. Like you can take a double or a float you know, and truncate it to make an integer dot to string to make a string. Like, like these are these functions that we can put together. And all of those functions and all of those types can still be exist inside the shadow land and work in exactly the same way as except the composition of functions has to be changed a little bit. Um, but Another point about this is like, it's not just, so maybe on the screen here is basically optional or nullable. Um, just making list of things is exactly the same. Keeping a log, um, things done asynchronously in futures. Um, why am I forgetting? Um, like, uh, uh, um, Rust type result types exceptions, they all fit into this like view of way of looking at 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 how things should interrelate. Um, and well, I. <laughs> I don't know, like, like the twist in the end of this tale is that you, you, you take this entire like data uh, uh, world of Delphi, for example, right, types and functions, and you transform it in these different ways to make these other shadow realms. But the thing is, all of those types over on the right hand side are already in the left hand side, like it's not actually going over to a different land, it's coming back to the like, when you take a list of something like um, list of integer is in one of our types, you know, list of uh, strings and lists and lists and lists and lists of lists. There or or anyway. That, yeah, it's but, sorry, just 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 to contextualize that. And so that so basically, you by adding by adding effectively a null attribute to something. You can wrap everything up and you can apply all the same functions, all the same, you know, uh, everything that we have already, but it becomes nullable effectively. With, with, with the proviso, with the proviso that you, it's like, like A plus B, for example, right? Yeah. Integer yeah, yeah. plus integer, we have no problem. But what yeah. if you got integer plus null? Like, oh, now we have to have like kind of a yeah a collapse well, a way it collapses instead of null's but, proper. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. So so this this functor idea about like moving from one world to the other, or monad is something that you know you hear around in computer science has been described as a programmable semicolon, right? It's like, and it's kind of really appropriate for Pascal. It's like, you do this, then you're going to do the next thing. 
but in the middle there's like this little adjustment but in a way that guarantees like the validity or or like that we keep the same mechanics we keep this like everything we had in delphi gets reproduced and works in the same logical way but anyway i that probably needs a different explanation either sometime later or never <laughs> <laughs> okay right well that seems like a very good place to pause then let me let me so uh thank thank you very much for for for, for that and insight into your into your uh research and um uh twisted yeah looking into all of that all that stuff of course the big takeaway for me is you're using obsidian but you know that's, that's another aside oh sure. <laughs> um and and like any of these pdf stuff is uh like you're, you're welcome to okay and the links and everything you're welcome to have anybody cool okay right let me stop recording and good, and, and good luck to you if you have <laughs> so stop sharing